Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about winter driving. And if you're just tuning in, be sure to tell us where you're from and uh, we can talk about that and talk about which part of the world you're in because tonight we're going to talk about winter driving and obviously those in the southern hemisphere are not experiencing snow as those of us in the northern hemisphere are. So, Anita's is here, uh, Expert Delight is here, and your driving test is next week, and you have a question, Expert Delight will certainly help you out with that uh, as well in terms of uh, <laughs> uh, winter driving. We're also going to talk about road tests and how to help you to pass your road test and be successful on that. So, Alex is here and is from Canada. Whereabouts are you from in Canada, Alex? So, just let us know. And if you're tuning in on the replay, be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section there. If you like what you see here and new to Smart Drive Test, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the snow. Yes, and Anita is from Antigua, where obviously they don't have any snow. Uh, very nice and lovely weather there most of the year around and lots uh, destination hotspot for most people. So, Alex is in Quebec. Awesome. Uh, Robert in Ohio still feeling like summer there in Ohio and Ohio is a little bit uh, farther south uh, Sabrina's from Red Deer so winter is rough <laughs> snow in September yes and one of the reasons why tonight we're talking about uh, winter driving here in Canada so we're gonna get ready for that and hopefully give you some heads up uh, Vinny's here and Vinny is from Windsor Ontario Canada just across the river there from Detroit Michigan and Tommy's here Tommy is from Oshawa uh, Canada welcome teacher everyone please follow Rick yes and Ryan is in Ontario so excellent so without further ado what we're gonna do we're gonna get right over to the winter driving uh, presentation uh, as Anita says yes and Tig was a great place for a vacation I'm sure that it is and definitely make my way down there uh, at some juncture in the future there Anita so uh, yeah so without further ado we're gonna get over to the winter driving uh, video and expert delight is from San Francisco uh, at least I think SF is San Francisco. It might be somewhere else in the world, but uh, yeah. And uh, all of that is really great. So we're going to get over to the presentation, and then after that, I'll do question and answers. And again, if you're just tuning in, be sure to let us know where you are in the world. And I am in Vernon, British Columbia, which is in the interior, and it's approximately uh, four, four and a half hours. Yeah, four and a half hours uh, north, northeast of Vancouver. So we're really in the. Uh, in the interior of British Columbia, the southern interior. Ryan, uh, will this cover CDL drivers? Yes, any questions you have, Ryan, about CDL, getting a CDL tractor trader license, bus, uh, bus or truck, I can certainly help you out with that. Air brakes as well, actually air brakes is my expertise. Just finishing up a book on that, hopefully to get that up uh, by November. So very excited about that. So Muhammad is in London, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Muhammad, London is a great place. I lived in London for a lot of years and I actually went to the university there at Western Ontario, so I did my undergraduate there. Uh, Eritrean in Canada. Okay, so excellent. And hi is from Pennsylvania. So we have a good smattering of people from all over North America here and elsewhere. Uh, I'm in Vancouver. It rains a lot, but yes, you do get snow every now and again there in Vancouver. And actually, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So without further ado, we're going to get over to the PowerPoint presentation and get going on that. So just bear with me for one sec here while I make the transition. Yeah, that never works the way I want it to work. So there we go. Okay. bear with me there we go okay so transition here we go so just I'll make myself a little bit smaller here so bear with me so winter driving and for those of you who don't know my name is Rick August uh, I do have a PhD I have a PhD in legal history for those that you don't know uh, legal history is the study of policing courts and prisons and my expertise is in policing as it are it, yeah in policing as it relates to traffic uh, I've been a commercial driving instructor since 1997 I taught air brakes tractor trailers and buses as well, uh, smaller buses and taxis and those types of things also. And uh, I drove truck, tractor trailer in North America throughout the 1990s and then uh, in the 2000s while I was going to university I drove bus for Greyhound, I did a full time, a year full time and then I moved from driving coaches for Greyhound to doing a part time run 
for the V line, which is it hooks up the train stations there in uh, Melbourne, and I basically ran from Melbourne down to Ballarat and back back through uh, Bacchus Marsh and those types of places. If you've been to Australia, you might know some of those places. So winter driving. So we're going to talk a little bit about winter driving, as was mentioned in the comments there. Uh, Alberta, Canada has had winter time here in September. Calgary got a good dump of snow and uh, in the higher mountain passes here in Canada as well, we've had snow. And uh, this picture here on the cover page is uh, Victoria, British Columbia, BC, which many of you who may be aware of the province's capital here in Canada, uh, they generally don't get snow. They get one dump of snow a year. So, uh, it tends to be a bit more treacherous here in Victoria when it does snow because it's generally around the freezing mark. And we're going to talk about why it's a bit more dangerous uh, when there's snow uh, at when when the temperature is around the freezing mark as opposed to why it's less dangerous and you have more traction at sub-zero temperatures. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit and try and give you some information about driving safe in the wintertime. So the first thing you want to do, and if you haven't already done it, one of the things you want to do in terms of winter preparation is you want to uh, get your vehicle prepared. You want to check the windshield wipers, tires, fluids, lights, and those types of things. Uh, you want to make sure you have all the equipment in the vehicle. You have, you have your snow brush, your emergency kits, if you need chains, if you're running in the mountains, and those types of things. And you sort of need to meet, need to make the mental shift uh, to driving in the winter time and uh, if you haven't done that already you sort of need to do that and know that you need to increase your following distance you can't speed as much you need to take note of temperatures outside and those types of things because if the temperatures around zero uh, know that the roads are going to be a lot more slippery and it's going to be a lot more dangerous there in the winter time so take note of all of that all right so uh, cleaning the vehicle uh, clean the snow off all the glass, uh, clean the snow off the roof of your vehicle if you can reach it. I mean, for some of these vehicles are going to be a bit taller. <laughs> it's going to be a little more difficult to get the snow off the roof, but do the best you can to get up there. Maybe you might need to get a broom or whatnot to get the snow off the top. But make sure definitely that you get all the snow off the lights. And if it is overcast or gray while you're driving, you do want to have uh, the lights on while you're driving so that you're visible to other traffic while you're driving, for sure. So. Okay, uh, and uh, one of the other things I just mentioned here, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the presentation, I do apologize about that. While I'm doing the presentation, because I only have two screens here, I do need another screen. I can't answer comments, and I'll, but I'll come back to those and I'll catch up on the comments, okay? So cleaning off the vehicle. So spend some time and clean off the vehicle, and there's a video here in the winter driving playlist, and we'll put that up for you. Uh, that will show you how to clean off the vehicle and you know you just want to start the vehicle up let the vehicle run while you're cleaning the snow off the vehicle and those types of things generally by the time you get finished cleaning off the snow the engine has run long enough that the oil is up through the engine it's warmed up a little bit and you can just get in and drive it you don't need to sit and let it idle for 10 or 15 minutes in the winter time all right okay so braking and steering uh, the reasons that we lose control of vehicles in the winter time and other times that we go into a skid is because uh, we uh, it's over braking over steering or over acceleration all of those the overuse of the primary controls is going to cause you to lose control of your vehicle especially on slippery conditions when you're driving on ice and snow and braking and steering most definitely in the winter time have to be do two separate actions and when you're slowing down you got to slow down in a straight line and you got to have the speed that you want to be at to t make the turn before you start making the turn <laughs> when I was a new driver and I had my first vehicle and I was driving in the winter time I went to make a turn at an intersection I was trying to make a right hand turn I hit the brakes and turned the steering wheel and the vehicle just continued to go straight as I watched the road that I wanted to turn on go by and uh, learned very quickly and and you know in a, in a lesson fortunately that n nobody got hurt uh, that braking and steering are absolutely two different uh, two separate actions when you're driving in the winter time as well when you're driving in the winter time you want to test the conditions of the roadway if you're unsure uh, whether there's freezing rain or there's ice on the roadway and those types of things uh, just tap the brakes somewhere where there isn't check to make sure there aren't other vehicles around you or behind you and that way just tap the brakes and see if you've got good traction or whatnot and if you fit your vehicle with good tires uh, you're going to have decent traction. If you've got good winter tires on here in British Columbia, a lot of people run uh, steel studded snow tires which really grip into the roadway and that's going to help you to have good traction because if you don't have traction, you're not going to get stopped. You might be able to get the vehicle going, but you're going to have difficulty getting it stopped. And really stopping is what you need to do because a lot of people will drive 
all all wheel vehicles or front wheel drive vehicles or four wheel drive vehicles and getting going isn't the problem getting stopped is the problem and if you watch the video on tires there that i did with um gary krieger here at tire tireland in vernon british columbia it's a really good video on tires and fitting tires to your vehicle that one of the things that you need to do is you actually need to get stopped. Now when you're making left hand turns you want to make your, those left hand turns at a really slow speed 10 kilometers an hour or approximately 8 miles an hour depending on where you are in the world so make sure that you get slowed down and that the use of your primary controls are separate so the steering is separate from the braking and then obviously the throttle you want to be nice and gentle on the throttle to be able to to get traction and get the vehicle moving on slippery conditions. Now again, we come back to space management and space management for me is really the fundamentals of defensive driving. It's the fundamentals of night driving. It's the fundamentals of driving in the winter time and keeping yourself safe because if you're not near other traffic, it's less likely that you're going to hit something. And these vehicles here, you can see on the highway that it's snowing and there's lots of snow. These vehicles are all cluttered up. I would argue that these vehicles are too close together. You need to spread out. And because if you've got more distance, you've got more opportunity to actually get the vehicle stopped on uh, snow and ice and in compromised conditions. Now, the other thing that you want to do, uh, you want to keep all of this in mind to be safe in the winter time. You want to leave yourself an out because it's always faster to steer out of an emergency situation than it is to break out of an, an emergency situation. But in order to steer out of an emergency situation, you need some place to go. One of the places that we can always control space around our vehicle is in the front of the vehicle. So do not, <laughs> do not you know, drive right up under the vehicles because that way you're not going to have yourself an out in order which to brake or steer. Aim high in your steering, so look far down the road. Communicate with other drivers. The way that we communicate with other drivers is our, our lights, our horn, hand gestures, eye contact, and position of the vehicle on the roadway. All of those actions communicate to other road users what we're doing. So get the big picture, look all around you, the shoulders, the road, and those types of things, because know that in the winter time, uh, there's the odd, uh, interesting person out there who may or may not be on their bicycle. So make sure that you're looking out for those kind of people as well, and then make sure they see these. So if you're at an intersection and it's slippery and there's compromised conditions, make sure that other road users or other drivers do see you before you start to pull out, because in slippery conditions and compromised road conditions, you're not going to be able to get stopped. You're not going to have the same acceleration you normally would. So you're not going to have the same evasive techniques that you normally would on dry roads. So make sure that other drivers see you and that they're not going to pull out or assume that they have the right of way as well. Okay. Defensive braking. Drive for the conditions of the road. Check your mirrors. Tap your brakes to warn other traffic behind you that you're going to get that you're going to come to a stop. Because if you start coming to a stop, the traffic behind you may not have traction and they may not be able to get the vehicle stopped. So know that you need to sort of tap your brakes and warn other traffic behind you. This is especially important as you saw that image there earlier of the freeway. If you come up on a freeway and all of the traffic is stopped, do not pull right up to the traffic that stops. Stay back eight or ten car lengths and that way you can watch the vehicles behind you whether they're coming up too fast and they're going to get stopped. As well, put your four-way uh, flashers on that indicates the traffic that's some behind you that something's going on. If you, pull, if you stop back from the traffic that's already stopped and the traffic is coming behind you, you have a buffer to move forward and it's less likely that you're going to get rear-ended. That's one of the most important techniques. And in the winter time, it's important to do most of the braking before you get to where you actually want to stop. So you want to come up, do two-thirds of the braking before you get to where you actually want to stop, and then you want to creep up to where you actually want to stop because intersections are especially slippery in the winter time and the reason for that is because the cars come up and they break and they slide along the top of the ice and when they slide across the top of the ice the friction between the tires and the roadway creates heat and it melts the ice slightly and you get a layer of water on top of the ice at the intersection which makes it slippery so intersections in the winter time are more slippery than other sections of the roadway because of that layer of ice on top of the roadway so and Again, defensive stopping, and we've talked about this before with new drivers, that just before you come to a stop with, with the vehicle, with any vehicle, CDL vehicles or passenger vehicles, apply the brakes and then release them and then reapply them just before you come to a full stop. That way you'll allow the chassis or the body of the vehicle rather to settle back on the chassis and you'll get a nice smooth stop. Okay, weather reports. So one of the most important things that you can 
take note of in the winter time and I know that we're all busy in the morning we're getting ready we're trying to get the kids out the door to go to school and those types of things take note of the weather report and this is really easy in this day and age of all of us has, having cell phones and all of us having access to the internet and those types of things if the temperature outside is 30 deg 32 degrees Fahrenheit or it's zero degrees Celsius know that the temperature is around freezing and if the temperature is around freezing there it's going to be more slippery than it is going to be at sub-zero temperatures because there's a layer of water on the ice because at zero degrees Celsius water is making the transition from a liquid to a solid and it's always freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing and when you get that layer of water on top of the ice that's when it's essentially slippery so it's more treacherous to drive when the temperature is around for the freezing mark in the winter time than it is in minus 20 degrees Celsius weather or you know minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit because at minus 15 degrees it's solid ice and it's a bit sticky think of it like ice cubes that you take out of your freezer when you first take them out of the freezer they're a little bit sticky when you put them on the counter but if you let them sit there for a couple of minutes they kind of they zing across the countertop because what's happened is they've melted and there's a layer of water now on the ice and it makes it more slippery now the other thing in winter time when we we have this within traffic safety that there's such a thing as black ice I don't I don't subscribe to the term black ice because it's just ice whether you can see it or not there's still ice on the roadway and if the temperature is around freezing there's going to be black ice and there's specific places in the winter time or this time in the fall when you're going to get frost and those types of things where you are going to find black ice black ice is going to be found in low-lying areas it's going to be found at high elevations it's going to be found in any place along the roadway where you're going to have shadows or there's overhanging buildings or those types of places and it's going to be along bodies of water those are places where ice is going to form on the roadway and the one other place on the roadway where ice is going to form is on bridges and overpasses it's because the cold temperature hits the bridge or overpass from both sides so therefore these are the places where you're going to get ice in the winter time low-lying areas high elevations uh, any place that the road lies in shadow bridges and overpasses in any place where the uh, the roadway goes past a body of water are places you're going to get ice so 40 percent of crashes occur at intersections I already talked about that at some length about the fact that intersections are slippery because the cars come up and break they create friction which the byproduct is heat and you get the ice melting on the top of the ice or the, the ice melts and creates a layer of water on top of the ice and that lubricates the ice and makes it more slippery it's kind of like the ice hockey rink after the Zamboni goes over the ice and floods it that's when the ice hockey is the most slippery because there's a layer of water on top of the ice that lubricates it. So break early, check the conditions of the roadway and approach where you actually want to stop. So do the most of the braking back two thirds before you want to get to stop and then actually creep up to where you want to stop. All right, so loss of control, and I mentioned this briefly previously, oversteering, over braking and over accelerating. Any one of these uh, overuse of this primary controls will cause you to go out of control and if you do go into a skid in the winter time take your foot off the throttle do not apply the brake absolutely do not apply the brake and look in the direction you want the vehicle to go and steer in that direction as well make sure that you wear your seat belt and you can post off the dead pedal the dead pedal is the pedal on the extreme left that doesn't do anything it's actually a lot of people think it's a footrest it's actually called a dead pedal you can post off that it's adopted from racing cars where racing car drivers put their foot on the dead pedal they push themselves back into the seat and they stay in the seat and they can control the vehicle as well if you do go into a skid in the winter time do not give up <laughs> most people get into a crash in the winter time because they give up they don't keep trying so work that steering wheel and continue to try and get out of the skid in the winter time all right so skid control we talked a little bit about this drive for the conditions of the roadway if you do go into a skid steer in the direction you want to go don't give up make sure that you wear your seat belt and if a crash is imminent make sure that you head for a snowbank a hedge or something like that don't aim for a big tree or a rock or something like that because rocks and trees they don't move it's better to hit something soft or go into the ditch than it is to hit something that's solid especially another car that's coming towards you try not to do that at any cost uh, if you can do that at all all right so conclusion so driving in the winter time it's the most dangerous when the temperature is around freezing because 
there's a layer of water on top of the ice and that's when it's the most dangerous. Make sure that you get your car ready, good tires on your vehicle, windshield wipers, lots of uh, windshield washer fluid, especially when it's dirty and there's kind of lots of salt and snow and uh, sand on the roadways. You want to keep all of that good. Take note of the weather when you're going out in the morning. Take note of what the temperature is. Is the temperature around freezing? Uh, your vehicle, know what your vehicle is capable of. Is it a rear wheel drive vehicle? Is it an all wheel drive? Or is it a front wheel drive vehicle? And that's going to uh, influence the handling of the vehicle as well. Know that you might be able to get the vehicle going, but can you actually get it stopped? And if you come up to a stop in the wintertime, make sure that you do the bulk of the braking back from where you want to stop and then creep up to where you actually want to stop. That's how you get stopped in the wintertime. And light conditions are going to be lower. We're going to have daylight savings time here in a couple of weeks. So you're going to make sure that your headlights are good. Keep your headlights clean. Anytime you go in to get fuel, make sure you clean the headlights and those types of things. And as well, when you take off in the morning, if it has been snowing, make sure you try and clean the entire vehicle off. And uh, we don't have to, because of uh, electronic fuel control in this day and age, we don't have to let the vehicles idle for a long period of time. You can just go out and fire it up. By the time you clean the snow and ice off the windshield and, and side windows and those types of things, all of that's going to be good. So you're going to be good and ready to go. So here's a few Canadian things. Benum, <laughs> Canadian is poutine, skidoos, and couleur de bois. Uh, some, from some of our friends there in Quebec. So that's essentially the uh, presentation on winter driving. And, uh, and now we'll just go over to the questions and answers and we'll a answer any questions you might have. So just bear with me while I transition back here. And I get back over to PowerPoint. There we go. So, lots of people here. Bricks for Wheels. Uh, that's Corey. Corey is the moderator here. So, if you have any questions, we're just going to go back up here. Uh, glad to see you. I'm in Vancouver. Yes, so Vancouver gets a, an annual snowfall as well, one time a year. And, uh, when it snows in Vancouver, it's a lot like when it snows in Victoria because oftentimes the temperature is right around freezing and when the temperature is right around freezing in the wintertime, it's much more treacherous for them to drive as well. A lot of people in Vancouver and Victoria and these other places in the world where they get just one snowfall a year, they don't really equip their vehicles for winter driving. For example, uh, those of us here in Vernon, I can already hear all of the cars driving around and they're fitted with their steel studded snow tires and steel studded snow tires uh, are <laughs> they're noisy in the winter time I have a set of them for my car and I don't like putting them in on my vehicle it's kinda like driving with square tires on my vehicle they're really noisy they don't handle well and they're they're terrible on my suspension uh, compared to my summer tire all season Michelin's which are really quite nice to put on in the summertime okay uh, Trevor uh, how do winter tires help with Stopping. So, Trevor, that's a really great question. Uh, and actually, look at the video uh, I did, uh, the interview I did with Gary Krieger there, and he talks about siping, which is the the cuts in the treads and the tires. It allows the tires to flex, and what happens is, is that siping moves the snow out of the tire block as well because it flexes. It's actually able to grip onto the roadway. The other thing, Trevor, that's different about winter tires is, is that the rubber compound that they use is softer than it is for summer tires uh, because it gets cold and it gets harder, so it's more flexible because it's a softer rubber, and because it's a softer rubber, it's more flexible and will grip the roadway. So winter tires, if you are encountering a lot of winter in the, t in the uh, during this season, I would definitely recommend that you put winter tires on your vehicle because they are better tires at gripping uh, snow and ice and as well uh, if you put steel studded snow tires in they're actually going to dig into the ice and snow so that's what you can do. Sam is here. Sam is with uh, Rookie Auto Driving School in Bronx in New York there as well so that's really good. Uh, Rubber is here from Winterpeg. Uh, uh, Fram is here. Was good. Yes. And Penny's here. How are you? Excellent. Sad Ann is here. Sad Ann is from Russia. So lots of winter there. <laughs> I've seen some of the video that Sad Ann has sent me. And yes, indeed, there is a lot of winter there uh, in uh, Russia as well. Canva's here. And uh, Penny went in a major intersection to make a left turn on a green light, but suddenly light turns to red. What I have to do, I allow to complete the turn. Yes, Penny, if you're in the intersection and, and you're making a left-hand turn and the light goes from green to red as it sometimes seems that it does, you need to clear the intersection. 
know that you own the intersection and you need to clear the intersection. There's a really good video here on left-hand turns. It's not the one that usually comes up, but there's a pickup truck in the middle of the intersection and two tractor trailers come through on the other side and the pickup truck is clearly in the intersection when the light goes red. That pickup truck knows that it owns the intersection and that it has to clear the intersection. So if you're in the intersection when it goes yellow or red, you have to clear the intersection, especially on a road test. So know that for the purposes of both a road test and driving defensively, that you own the intersection, you have to clear the intersection. Sarah's here, and if you're just tuning in now to the live stream, uh, just let us know in the comments there where you're tuning in from in the world. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, uh, consider giving the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and leave a comment down in the comment section there. I do try every couple of days, two, three days at the most, to get to people's comments and questions and answer all of your questions to help you be successful on a road test. As well, in the last week or so, if you've been successful on a road test, uh, be sure to stop over at uh, WW Smart Drive Test and, and register with the 100K campaign. We're uh, on a mission here to help 100,000 drivers in the next year to uh, earn their license regardless of class, whether it's a CDL license, whether it's a passenger vehicle uh, or air brakes. So make sure you sign up for that as well. And Corey will put that up for you. Uh, <laughs> I like the arrows there, Jaden. Yes, okay. So where are you, Jaden? There we go. Uh, I got some good news. My dad said he's going to get my car back, and he said it's going to be at his house Thursday morning, so I'm excited. I can't wait to get my car home. That is really awesome, Jaden. I'm really great. Uh, Vinny, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. And yes, there's a lot of people on the live stream, so if I don't see your comment, just leave me another little comment there <laughs> like uh, uh, Jaden did and I'll be sure to get back to your comment and certainly answer your comment for you. So Mark is from London, Ontario. Uh, <laughs> boy 2001 Red Foreman. Yes, I look like Red Foreman. I've, I've had that comment before. Sure. Uh, excellent. Canva. I took my road test last September 24 and it feels awesome. Just still follow the rule 100%. Have a safe driving everyone. Excellent. Congratulations Canva on passing your road test there. And if you could, uh, Corey will put up the 100K uh, campaign. Go over and register for that if you haven't already done so. That'd be really great. Uh, Tommy, I got my full G Ontario at age 29. I'm turning 38 in November. Never too old, never too late. And that is for sure, Tommy. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it's really great. And you know something? Uh, I learn stuff all the time. I had a comment, and maybe one of the smart drivers here might be able to help me with this. We have here talking about winter tires. In British Columbia, we have something called M&S tires. M&S tires are mud and snow tires, and they're rated for winter driving because one of the ways that they've, they haven't made it a law that you have to have winter tires, but here in British Columbia, you do have to be fitted with winter tires to drive over some of the mountain passes. So, for example, here in Vernon, if you head east out of Vernon and you're going to Nacosp, or other places over the Coquihalla and whatnot, you do have to have winter tires on to drive over the Coquihalla. So that's kind of the way they skirt the issue. So M&S, so I had a, a smart driver say to me that they don't have M&S tires in, uh, in Ontario. And I, maybe one of the smart drivers would be able to confirm that for me that in fact you can't buy M&S tires in Ontario. That seems a little bit strange to me. That's the reason I ask, okay? Uh, there we go. Okay, Jaden, I got your question. Trevor, uh, you're most welcome. Uh, no comment. Uh, you're really amazing. I love all your videos. My test drive soon. I'm so worried. Thanksgiving to you and Thanksgiving to you as well. Thank you so much. No comment. Uh, Bricks for Wheels put up the, uh, Corey put up the URL for the 100K campaign. Vinny, how often in terms of days and how long in terms of minutes should you practice while learning how to drive? Uh, Vinny, for me, what I recommend to students is I recommend six weeks. And, and the course that I have, Passion Road Test First Time Guaranteed, that I have over at the Smart Drive Test website, uh, is a six-week schedule. I say that it takes about six weeks from the time that you start learning how to drive until you're fully prepared to pass a road test. And as well, the other thing that I want to say to people is, is that know that there is a it's a very different exercise between being able to drive a vehicle safely on the roadway and being able to pass a road test especially for those older smart drivers who are going to get a license and you've been driving before you've been driving in another country and you've immigrated to north america or some other place if you're going for a road test know that there are specific skills techniques and 
uh, abilities that you need to be have in place to be successful on a road test and that's the specific purpose of smart drive test we help you to pass a road test and there are specific playlists here uh, the final days preparation pass your road test first time slow speed maneuvers all of those videos are specifically directed at smart drivers who are working to earn their license and preparing for a road test because there's specific procedures uh, I had a smart driver the other day say that he wasn't successful on his road test because the examiner asked him to do a three-point turn didn't know what a three-point turn was well then I gave him the video and he says to me well I already know how to do a three-point turn yes you can do a three-point turn I can do a three-point turn as well but doing a three-point turn just to get the vehicle turned around is completely different than what you what they expect you to do for the purposes of a road test on a, on, the, on a road test they expect you to signal every time you change direction with the vehicle because they want you to know that you are going to be able to communicate to other traffic and road users that you are moving the vehicle across the ve across the roadway in an unpredictable uh, in an unpredictable fashion and, and that's what leads to traffic crashes in my in my professional opinion is, is that people execute unprofessional actions and when they do that that's when they get into trouble so know that being able to drive and being able to drive the vehicle for purpose of passing a road test those two things are very different and that you need to study in order to be successful on a road test regardless of class now there was somebody that asked me about CDL questions if you have any questions about CDL driving uh, just put your question in the comment there I'm more than happy to help you out with getting your license and uh, we can talk about that a little bit more as well so Trevor's from Oshawa uh, so Vinny so that answer your question it's approximately six weeks is what I tell people I mean obviously some people have some acuity and they're going to be able to shorten that length of time that they can uh, be ready to pass a road test but if you're working with a driving instructor and you're following the lessons here on smart drive test you're going to be all right you're going to do fine okay uh, Sabrina if I end up having to take my first driver's test after it snows what is your best advice to stay comfortable and maneuver properly for parks so uh, Sabrina there is a video here on winter driving and taking your test in the winter time and a lot of smart drivers a lot of drivers period shy away from taking a road test in the winter time and you'll see the the video here on taking a road test in the winter time and a, a practice driving test in the winter time it's actually more forgiving in the winter time than it is in the summertime. In the summertime, you can see all the, the road markings and those types of things. In the winter time, you can't see those things, so it's a bit more forgiving. And the other thing is, is that driving examiners do not push cars out of ditch out of snow banks. So you don't have to get close to the curb. It's not sort of six to nine inches. If there's a big bank of snow along the curb and they want you to parallel park and you parallel park in behind another vehicle in front of you, you just have to get in. You just have to line up with that vehicle in front of you. It doesn't matter if you're six to nine inches from the curb because that driving examiner does not want you in that bank of snow because you could get potentially you could get stuck and they don't want to get stuck because if they get stuck, they're going to be delayed. Their day is going to run out. They're probably going to have to cancel the test. So it's more forgiving in the winter time than it is in the summertime. So watch that video as well about how to do a road test in the winter time. Okay. Uh, Vinny, I've been practicing two days every week so far, about two weeks as of now. We'll continue to practice for another month. So Vinny, you're going to do great. You're doing awesome. Okay. Uh, Jamie, 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 I missed your thing here. Okay. I'm having a look here. Uh, yes, I'm going to keep practicing. Okay, excellent. So you're enjoying driving now. I didn't see the original comment there, Jamie. I live in Vernon. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Jamie. You're in Vernon. Awesome. Which uh, whereabouts in where whereabouts in Vernon are you, Jamie? Which part of Vernon are you in? Uh, Jano, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Jano. Thank you so much. I have a question regarding when parallel parking. Is there a difference whether you go over the curb and if you just lightly hit the curb? Also, could you fail on both ways? Okay, so if you go over the curb, Jano, that is a definite fail on a road test, okay? If you're parallel parking and you push the back tire up over the curb, automatic fail. If you lightly touch the curb and you know instantly that you have backed into the curb, and veteran drivers should know this or drivers with a bit of experience, if you were backing in and you were parallel parking and you touch the curb, you should be able to know that right away. And if you know that and you pull up and adjust, 
then you're not going to fail a road test. That's just considered an adjustment. But if you push the back tire up over the curb, automatic fail in a road test. If you if you hit the curb, like if you hit it and the body of the vehicle sways on the chassis, that's an automatic fail. Okay. Uh, I know that I didn't clarify that point in the video, but if you hit the curb or you push the wheel up over the curb, automatic fail. If you just touch the curb, that's not an automatic fail. Okay. Uh, penny. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> You're not too far from me, Jamie. Uh, I just live up the road. Where am I? I'm in East Hill. Yes, that's where I'm in. Okay, uh, Vinny, I've been practicing regular driving, parallel parking, three-point turns, and stall parking. I'm doing very good so far, according to my dad. Awesome, that's excellent. Rachel, <laughs> I love you too. Thank you so much, because without you, we couldn't do what we do here, helping people pass a road test and helping them to stay crash-free in the wintertime. So I'm just going to ask smart drivers here, uh, before I launch into this next little bit of the presentation, what is your biggest challenge in the winter time? Okay, and Sam agrees. I think Sam is agreeing with what I said about parallel parking uh, in terms of backing into the curb or pushing the wheel over the curb in terms of failing or being able to adjust the vehicle. All right. Okay. Yes, so same for Sam there who's in the teaching in the Bronx at the Rookie Auto Driving School. So excellent. Okay, uh, final road test. So Corey's put the uh, final day's prep. So anybody who's going for a road test, regardless of class, regardless of where you're going in the world, there are four fundamental co components to any road test. Speed management, space management, observation, and communication. You have to have those four components in place to be successful on a road test. So space management. Don't get near anything. Don't get near other road users. Don't get near fixed objects. If you don't get near anything it's less likely you're going to hit something as well in terms of space management you need to follow at two to three seconds behind other traffic you need to stop in traffic so you can see the tires of the vehicle making clear contact with the pavement when you stop at stop signed intersections you need to stop before the stop line before the crosswalk or sidewalk and if there isn't any either of those then you need to stop where the two roads meet speed management you need to do the speed of the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. If you're driving a CDL vehicle, you have to do what the, the, the vehicle is capable of. So if you're going uphill and you can only do 30 kilometers an hour in a 50, do 30, okay? Communication, you have to communicate effectively with other traffic, lights, horn, hand signals, uh, hand gestures, appropriate hand gestures. Don't tell other drivers or road users that they're number one on a road test, uh, okay? Position of the vehicle on the roadway and what's one other one, I missed one eye contact. Those are the ways that you communicate your intentions with other road users. And then finally, you have to observe correctly for the purposes of a road test. You have to have a scanning pattern in place when you're driving in a straight line. You have to look far down the road. You have to come in, check your center mirror, far down the road, check your wing mirrors, far down the road, both sides of the roadway, and come in and check your instrument panel. That's the scanning pattern that you need to have in place. When you're doing slow speed maneuvers, you need to do a 360 degree scan before you start backing up or doing your executing your slow speed maneuver. You have to look out the back window when you're reversing the vehicle. As well, uh, you, turns and lane changes. Anytime you move the vehicle laterally, you have to shoulder check once before you execute the turn and then again immediately before the turn. So two shoulder checks before any time you make turns or any time you move the vehicle laterally. So you must observe well when you're driving, okay, and you need to check your mirrors, obviously, and those types of things. So those are the four fundamental components for any road test, regardless of class, wherever you're taking it in the world. Observation, communication, speed management, and space management. You must have those four components in place to be successful on a road test. All right, so the questions came in quick and fast there. All right, uh, smack the curb and you're out. Yes, so as Sam agreed with me on the winter, on the parallel parking, uh, what I was saying about that. Okay, Jaden, my biggest issue about driving in the wintertime is black ice because I might think that I'm going to crash into something. So again, Jaden, and a lot of people would, I think, would agree with you in terms of smart drivers and black ice in the wintertime. Know that this is the time of year that you're going to get ice on the roadways. And as I said about ice on the roadways, we call it black ice, but unfortunately I don't subscribe to that term because I don't think there is such a thing. 
it's just ice and there's going to be ice when the temperature is around the freezing mark so either zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit and where ice is going to form bridges and overpasses low-lying areas high elevations and any place that the roadway lies in shadow and any place where the roadway goes past a body of water you're going to have ice on the roadway so if you're in those areas on the roadway and so it's important in the winter time or in this time of the year when you can get up in the morning and it's been cold all night and the temperature is around freezing you're going to have ice on the roadway so take note of the temperature and then when you're driving take note of the geography is the, jo is the roadway dipping down is are you at high elevations on, at the top of a mountain are you on a bridge or overpass know that if you are in any one of these places there's going to be ice on the roadway so you can do that and you can predict fairly with a high degree of accuracy where there's going to be ice on the roadway and if you know that simply take your foot off the throttle steer in the direction you want to go and oftentimes you're not going to get out of trouble where people get into trouble is they come around a corner and they hit a bridge and the car's out of line and as soon as the car's out of line oftentimes they're going too fast and they hit that ice and the car just loses control because they're already going too fast so drive for the conditions of the roadway and take note of what the temperature is outside that'll go a long way to keeping you safe when there's ice on the roadways uh jamie i haven't driven in the winter yet but i'd like to learn to do donuts uh just kidding uh actually jamie if you go down to the polson park mall where the theater is there uh that's where i shot the video on learning to drive in the winter time <laughs> and actually in that video i show you how to do donuts and i show you how to do a rockford so have a look at that video uh, hall phase no it's great that you're here thanks so much for showing up uh hall phase i'm doing awesome yourself hall phase how are you doing uh expert delight uh do you know the process of driving test in the dmv uh hyper delight the the process for driving at the dmv is the same as what i told you before about the four components of a road test speed management space management observation and communication you get those four components in place and you're going to be successful on a road test as well dmv uh, look at the video at backing along a curb. I know they do that in California. So how to back along a curb and put your four-wheels on, you're on a public road, and then you want to back along the road. Now what I say to students is, is that you want to stay out about two or three feet so that you have a little bit of wiggle room because what happens is, is if the back end get, gets in close or whatnot, you don't have any wiggle room and you might get the front steer tires into the curb and those types of things. So have a look at that as well. Uh, <laughs> Jamie I wish you were the well unfortunately I'm not a driving uh, examiner Jamie I'm actually I'm just I'm a driving instructor so uh, Jaden uh, this is a question I still understand do you get a ticket or a warning for stopping on the stop line because my mom got a ticket or warning what's the point of that uh, it's hard for me to comment on that Jaden because I don't know what your mom was doing or why she got a ticket for that that's that's odd <coughs> excuse me uh, Vinny, do you recommend taking your driver's test during the winter or the summer? Are they both the same besides the weather? Uh, Vinny, uh, no, actually, I recommend to smart drivers to take your road test in the winter time because if you can take it in the winter time when there's snow on the roads, as I said, it's not as exact as it is in the summertime. So in the summertime, for parallel parking, for example, you have to be six to twelve and you have to be nine to twelve inches from the curb in the winter time you just have to line up behind the vehicle in front of you because they the driving examiner doesn't want you in the snowbank because if you get into the snowbank you're going to get stuck and <laughs> let me tell you driving examiners do not push cars they don't push so <laughs> it's less exact as well in the winter time all the road markings are covered up so when you come to a stop at an intersection, you don't have to stop behind the stop line. If there's a sidewalk, you just have to stop behind the si si sidewalk, come to a complete stop, move up until you can see, and then proceed. So it's, it's a lot less exact in the wintertime. So I encourage smart drivers to take your road test in the wintertime. Don't shy away from that because it's wintertime. And the only other thing that you need to do is keep the vehicle straight, do the bulk of your braking back from where you actually want to stop and then creep up to where you're going to come to a stop. It's, if you do a little bit of driving in the wintertime, it's going to be a lot easier than it is in the summertime to take your road test. Okay, Jano, how often have you personally got stuck in the snow, Rick? I had to help my dad push when I was really young, so I was late, wasn't late for school. <laughs> uh, Jano, actually, I haven't got stuck very often. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, maybe a couple, two, three times. 
Uh, I've had vehicles slide off the roadway. One one time, what happened to me, Jana? One time was that was where we parked our car in Ottawa was between two buildings. What happened was I was backing a minivan up the driveway, and and all of the uh, ice had melted off the roof, and it had created a kind of a a ridge like this and and the van was up on the one side there and it hit the ice and it slid down and it smashed the mirror on the wall of the other roof so I've had a few incidents but getting stuck uh, when was the oh the last time I got stuck was here in Vernon three years ago we had a dump of 36 inches of snow in a 24-hour period and I did get stuck at one point uh, the, the I drove into a pile of snow and the vehicle actually high centered on the snow So what that means is that the snow is so deep that it actually just lifts the vehicle up And you can't get it out until you dig all that snow from underneath the vehicle. So that was one time I got stuck uh, Sabrina for parallel park during the test. Do you still have to? Signal light on my current instructor hasn't clarified that okay, so Sabrina that's an excellent question for parallel parking so what you're going to do in preparation for parallel parking, so approximately half a block of where you're going to parallel park, you put your right signal on indicating that you're going to parallel park. You come up, line yourself up three feet from the vehicle that you're going to parallel park in behind, and you can line up the mirrors, but you want to line up the rear bumpers of the two vehicles, and then immediately as you come to a stop, put the vehicle into reverse. So you've got your reverse lights on, and you've got your right signal on indicating the traffic behind you that you're going to parallel park. So that's how you do that. Uh, hall phase, yes, hall, ice does sometimes form at 10 degrees, uh, not 10 degrees Celsius, it might, but if it is above zero, like 5 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it can form on bridges and overpasses and low-lying areas and areas that lie in shadow. So yes, you can get ice well above the freezing point, so know that, uh, and that's a good point for other drivers as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Gould, I got more experience, so I appreciate you anytime. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Uh, Jamie, I will definitely look for that video. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Uh, 86, my car can't lock when it's on, and I walk away with my key fob, so during winter cold weather to warm the car up. Do you have any tips on that? Uh, my car can't lock. Oh, 86, if your car can't lock, uh, you don't have to leave your vehicle running for a long period of time in the winter time to be able to drive it. Uh, if you fire it up, and clean the windows and the snow and ice off the windows and glass and the roof. By the time you get that done, the vehicle is going to be ready to drive. And if you just drive it moderately, it's going to warm up a lot faster. And actually watch the video in the winter driving playlist there on cold weather starts and how to get the vehicle going in the winter time. That'll help you out. Uh, <laughs> Sam, there you go. So Sam has put that up. And the other thing that I recommend to drivers, if you're going to go for a road test, uh, make sure that you do a practice driving test with a local driving school and as Sam says there in the Bronx They only charge $25 to do a practice driving test with you It's money well spent if you go to a driving school and they do a mock road test with you They're going to give you the exact feedback and the skills that need to be uh, Strengthened in order for you to be successful on a road test and pass. Okay uh, John random question about four-way stops Right away, pedestrian, if I stop first but was interrupted by a pedestrian, when the pedestrian is halfway the crosswalk, the second arrives to a stop, do I have to? Uh, do I have the right of way? Uh, not, not as a rule, John. Most of the time, pedestrians have the right of way in four-way stops. And as well, uh, look at the video on pedestrians and how much distance you need between you and pedestrians on a road test. On a road test, you need a minimum of one lane of buffer between you and a pedestrian and that applies when the pedestrian is going away from you not coming towards you uh, because what's going to happen is you get into the turn especially if you get into larger vehicles uh, you're not going to have enough time and you're going to be too close to the pedestrian so you want to have lots of distance between you and pedestrians during a road test so have a look at that and Corey will get that up for you as well uh, Jamie, merging onto the highway makes me nervous when there are lots of cars driving fast. And yes, that's not unusual, Jamie. It's it's a bit of a daunting task to be merging, uh, especially on uh, highways and those types of things, especially here on Highway 97 out of the north end of Vernon here. Okay, Vinny, uh, Vinny, 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 where'd you go? I lost you. There we go. Thanks for the answer, Rick. I think I will take my driver's test during the winter since I feel more comfortable after a month's worth of practice. Excellent. Ed, I'm from Australia. 
damn hot here today, no snow. <laughs> definitely not, no, Ed, it's definitely, uh, we're going into summer there in Australia. Whereabouts are you in Australia, Ed? Okay, Jamie, my mock road test is on Thursday, excellent. Uh, and actually, Sam is just saying that it's only $20 for a mock road test, which is an awesome deal. Rachel, I'm going to take my road test soon. I owe it all to you. God bless. God bless you, Rachel, as well. And thank you so much for the compliment. Uh, 86, I heard mixed notions on that. I don't have to leave car idling during cold weather to warm it. I do believe the, the turn uh, three minutes, then go, then it will warm the car faster. Uh, yeah, you don't, uh, 86, you don't have to warm the car up. A lot of people do that, and unfortunately it hangs on for a long time that we still need to warm the cars up. You don't. You only need to start the car for 30 seconds, enough for the oil to get up through the engine and to be circulating through the engine. After that, because of electronic fuel injection, if you drive the car moderately, don't step on the fuel and accelerate aggressively. When you drive the vehicle, it's actually going to warm up faster than if you just sit, let it sit and idle. And of course, you're going to get better fuel economy too. I mean, not that you're going to get great fuel economy in the wintertime because the fuel economy always goes down because it's cold and the vehicle's working harder. Uh, but it's going to warm up faster and as well to defrost the windows in the wintertime, roll the the your window down, your driver's window down, just a little crack just to let the air come in and have the defrost on high and make sure that the air conditioning comes on too. On most vehicles, when you turn the air con or the uh, defrost on full, the air conditioning is going to come on as well. So know that for because what happens with the air conditioning is it dries out the air that's coming through uh, into the cabin of the vehicle. And when it dries out the vehicle, you have less moisture and it's, and it's going to help to defrost the windows inside the cabin. Uh, Roy, no, sorry, Roy, uh, have a look here for that. Uh, Roy, there we go. I came to stop by and say hi, hope you're doing great. Keep up these great videos. Hey people, this guy right there is the only reason I passed my Pass first time. Excellent. Thank. You. That's awesome, Ryan. I'm so glad to hear that you passed. And if you can and you don't mind, stop over at the Smart Drive Test website and sign up for the 100K program. Just register for that and let us know that you were successful. That is awesome. Congratulations on that. That's that's a great success. Okay, Jamie. Yeah, Highway 97, exact time I merged onto from Swan. Yeah, the Swan Lake area. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. And that, that merge lane there as well is a, is a bit of a blind area because you, until you get right out to the end, almost to the acceleration lane, you can't see the traffic off to the left there. And uh, what you might also want to do, Jamie, is just look at some of the videos here on merging and that'll help you out uh, merging onto the highway and give you some tips and those types of things. Okay, Kitty, what is your opinion on steel versus aluminum rims during the winter time? Uh, Kitty, most people in the wintertime will run steel rims in the wintertime. Aluminum, the salt and the sand and corrosion and those types of things is really hard on your aluminum rims in the wintertime. So if you can take them off your vehicle uh, and fit steel rims on your vehicle, it's going, to, it's going to prolong the life of your aluminum rims for sure. So yeah, and as well, <clears throat> aluminum will flex a lot more in the wintertime because of the vast temperature differentials you're going to have in the wintertime as opposed to steel. Steel isn't going to flex as much. So I, it's a bit safer in the wintertime. I don't know the exact science behind all of that. Some smart, One of the other smart drivers might know the better, more science and those types of things. But I would definitely recommend steel rims in the wintertime. So if you, and as well, as Gary points out, if you have two sets of tires on two sets of rims, so you have your winter tires on a steel set of rims and you have your summer tires on an aluminum set of rims, it's going to save you a lot of money in terms of changeover because as Gary said, if you take tires off one set of rims and put them back, uh, your winter tires back on that same set of rims, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks to change out your tires. Whereas if you just pull the tire off and put another tire back on your vehicle, it's only about 30 or 40 bucks to change your tires out at a tire shop. So it's going to save you money overall. Gary, I think Gary said it was going to be about four years and you're going to save that money back. Okay, 86. Uh, I seriously learn and get haha -ha moments, light bulb moments during your videos and live streams. Thank you, Rick and Corey. And 86, you're most welcome. I'm glad you got aha moments. I was actually watching a, a uh, a webinar last night by Ryan Dees at Digital Marketing and he was talking about that aha ha moment especially with Tesla and Tesla considers it a ha ha moment not when they get 
potential buyers to to road test their vehicle but they it's a haha -ha success moment for tesla when they take you out for a road test and they actually get you to launch the car because they have one of their tesla cars that will go zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds which is just crazy fast and that's their aha -ha moment for tesla so <laughs> we're always working on the ha ha moment here at Smart Drive Test. So I'm trying to figure out what my ha ha moment is, but I'm really great to hear that. So, John, any recommendations on which winter tire I should go for? Uh, I have a sedan. Uh, John, are you driving on a lot of compact snow and ice, or are you just driving on snow? Uh, I would recommend have a look at the video by with Gary there. And uh, maybe I can give you some recommendations about which ones. I don't know whether you're looking for brand or you're looking for a particular type of uh, tire or those types of things. But we can certainly help you out with that. Okay. Uh, but one of the things, John, about winter tires that Gary was saying is you certainly want a winter tire that has a lot of siping. You also want a winter tire that is M&S recommended. And like I said, if you're driving on a lot of compact snow and ice, you definitely want to get some uh, some t snow tires that are steel studded. You might want to consider that if you're driving on a lot of snow and ice, uh, compact snow and ice. Uh, Jamie, I sat inside a Tesla in Va Vancouver and I was in love. <laughs> Jamie, I got into a my car, my Maserati in Victoria. I actually went and looked at it. I didn't sit in it, but I did look at it. And that's, that's my car that I want. Uh, Sam, I just started teaching a 66-year-old man who has never driven a car in his life. That was really a workout. A lot of patience I must have. It just seems like he's not getting anything. Whew. Ah, yeah. Uh, 66 years old, Sam. I think that would be a lot of parking lot work with uh, pylons to begin with, just to be able to get accustomed to the primary controls of the vehicle and move it around. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be a lot of work. All right, so we're coming up to the end here. We're, we're getting close to the hour, so we're just going to wrap up here with a couple more questions. Uh, Vinny, is it better to go a little over the speed limit on a test or less? No, Vinny, you want to try and do the posted speed limit. So get the vehicle up to the posted speed limit as quickly as possible or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. Try not to be too much over and try not to be too much less. And if you do go over what the examiner wants to see is is that you have due care and control of the vehicle and that you are going to bring the speed back in very quickly okay so say for example you're in a 30 mile an hour or 50 kilometer an hour zone and it goes up five or six miles an hour they want to know that you're reining it in very quickly they want to see that you have due care and control of the vehicle so you need to drive the speed limit or the flow of traffic whichever is less as quickly as possible and keep it within that tolerance very narrow tolerance uh, uh, Frederico, what kinds of chains do you recommend? Uh, are you Frederico? Are you talking about for a big truck? Is that what you're talking about? Because if you're talking about a big truck, you definitely want triples. Okay. Epic uh, front wheel drive or all wheel drive for snow when traveling downhill. Uh, either one will do really well. Uh, Epic uh, front wheel drive and all wheel drive. Both of those will work well in the winter time. Uh, Huang, uh, greetings from Edmonton. Should I get a block heater or an oil pan? One, thanks. Uh, Edmonton, yes, you definitely want a block heater. <laughs> Either one will serve you well. Uh, you just need to heat, have a little bit of heat in the engine, so you need to do that. Uh, John, I live in Toronto, and usually the road gets plowed, but some snow slush gets left behind. I don't think studded tires are allowed. No, okay, so John, you're living in Ontario and Toronto. Uh, you definitely just want a good quality uh, snow tire uh, that's got lots of siping on it and definitely have a look at the video that I did with Gary on tire blowouts Corey will get that up for you and uh, That'll help you out with your winter tires. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up there Thank you everybody for showing up if you're watching on the replay give, give it a thumbs up if you're new to smart drive test consider subscribing uh, Leave a comment down in the comment section there all of this helps us out and if you passed a road test in the last week or so sh Make sure you head over to the smart drive test website and sign up for the 100k campaign We've put the link here in the comments as well. And if you're going for a road test in the next next week or two, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.